Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a huge historical romance haul to share with you guys. Um, I have been buying a bunch of historical romances off of eBay. Um, so I buy them in like big lots. So each of these books was like a dollar a piece, sometimes up to two dollars a piece if you include like shipping and um, sometimes it's a little bit more than like a dollar a piece. But I feel like I got all of these for a really great deal. They're cheaper than what they would have been at half price books because all of these like mass market paperbacks are like $4 at my half price books. So yeah, if I can get them for less than $4, then I definitely want to. So I have a lot of books here to share with you. I might even split this into two videos. So let's go ahead and get started. So all of this first section are books from Susan Enoch, I believe is how you say her name. I could be completely butchering that. So the first is the Griffin Family series. So the first book in that series is Sin and Sensibility. There's no step back, but um, this is the first book in the series. So Lady Eleanor wants an adventure before she gets married. Um, one of her brothers asks his best friend to be the sh like chaperone of her adventures. Um, he is determined to be honorable, but he has feelings for her. So this is like a brother's best friend romance. Then we have the second book in the series, which is An Invitation to Sin. So this is seven daughters and a lord that's teaching them how to get a man to marry them. Um, Caroline got into a prestigious art school, but then she started dreaming of love. Um, I'm assuming with the person that's teaching them. I think with the person that's teaching them how to get a husband. Then we have the fourth book in the series. I don't have the third one. This is Sins of a Duke. So Sebastian is a duke. He has a reputation for a scandal-free life um, until now. Josephina claims to be a princess, but he thinks she's up to something and he tries to um, expose her, but becomes very distracted by the allure of her kiss. Then we have the With This Ring series. So the first one is Reforming a Rake. Um, so Alexander is hired as a governess by Lucian for his little cousin, but he's the most notorious rake in London. He's determined to teach her about pleasure, but she teaches him a few things about love. And then the third book in the series is A Matter of Scandal. So Emma owns a finishing school for ladies and her new landlord wants to triple her rent. Um, he tricks Emma into a bet, but she's smarter than he realizes, and that's about all I know. Then we have Lady Rogue. I think this one is a standalone. So Christine is masquerading as a boy because her mission is to spy on Alexander, the Earl of Everton. It doesn't take long for Alex to see through her disguise. He's determined to see the real reason why she's in London, um, but he's dragged into one escapade after another, so he finds himself succumbing to her charm and spirit. Okay, then we have the Lessons in Love series. So the first book in this series is The Rake. So the notorious Viscount Dare charmed Lady Georgina Halley out of her innocence to win a bet and now he's going to have to pay. So the plan is simple. She's going to win his heart and then break it. But his smoldering gaze once again tempts her to give in to desire and when he astonishes her with a marriage proposal she wonders could it actually be love. The second book in the series is London's Perfect Scoundrel. So Evelyn Reddick knows she should avoid him at all costs, but the strikingly beautiful lady wants to aid the children of the Heart of Hope Orphanage, and he leads the Board of Trustees. Then we have England's Perfect Hero. This is the third book in the series. So Lucinda Barrett's best friends ended up married to the men who they delivered their lessons in love. So Lucinda decides to choose someone who definitely needs lessons, but someone who's not going to complicate her life. Um, that person is definitely not Robert Carraway. Robert's complicated and he rarely goes about society. Um, when she chooses someone for her love lessons, Ro Robert offers to help deliver her lessons, but sets out to convince the woman that he has fallen for to take a chance on him. Then we have Before the Scandal. This is the second book in the Notorious Gentleman series. So Colonel Phineas learns that someone is trying to ruin his family, so he becomes a highwayman. 
in the middle of the night he heads straight into trouble and it involves the girl next door. Then we have Taming Rafe. This is the second book in the Bancroft Brothers series. So Rafe Bancroft was nothing but a scoundrel, um, but he's now the owner of Fortin Hall, Felicity Harrington's ancestral home. She's determined to save her family from ruin at the hands of the handsome rake, but she lies in bed each night longing for her irresistible enemy's touch. Next up is Stolen Kisses. I believe this is a standalone. So Jack Faraday, the Marquis of Dansbury, is rich and titled and handsome as sin, a scandalous rake who's charmed a long string of ladies. He finally meets his match, Miss Lilith Benton, known as the Ice Queen. She's intent on restoring her family's good name. She only wants to make a respectable marriage, so when the tempting but notorious Jack begins to woo her, she is determined to ignore her or ignore him. Then their accidental involvement in a duke's mysterious death forces Jack and Lilith to become conspirators to clear their names and suddenly cold disdain gives way to hot desire. Then we have Taming an Impossible Rope which is the second book in the Scandalous Brides series. So one year ago Lady Camille Price left her haughty fiance at the altar. The marriage was arranged before she could even walk um, and he was too smug to bother meeting her. Now she's disowned with no husband or family to support her, so she's left with one option, go to work in the Notorious Tantalus Club. It's a gentleman's gaming house run by a woman. It's no place for a proper lady. So her jilted fiance must retrieve, retrieve her, but he's banned from the club, so he gets his cousin to do it instead. His cousin is a handsome, experienced rogue, and he's the perfect man to lure Camille away, but the moment they meet, he instead wants to save her for himself. That one sounds really good. Then we have Rules of Engagement, which is from the Adventurers Club series. It's the third book in that series. So, she has traveled the world, but she's completely innocent in the ways of love. She's never learned to dance or flirt, but scientific observation has taught her that the laws of attraction have no rules. Those are all the books from Susan Enoch. The next batch is from Judith McNaught. So first we have the Westmoreland series. None of these covers are very pretty, but the first book in the series is A Kingdom of Dreams. This is the story of Jennifer Merrick, a feisty Scottish be beauty and the fierce English warrior that she defies and desires. She's abducted from her convent school, but she doesn't easily surrender to to Royce Westmoreland, the Duke of Claymore. He's known as the Wolf. His very name strikes terror in the hearts of enemies, but she will have nothing to do with this man who holds her captive. She challenges his will until the night he takes her in his powerful embrace, awakening in her an irresistible hunger. The second book in this series is Whitney, My Love. So, um, Whitney Stone grew from a saucy hoyden into a ravishly sensual woman. She is fresh from Paris society, returned to England to win the heart of Paul, her childhood love, only to be bargained away by her bankrupt father to the handsome, arrogant Duke. Then the third book in the series is Until You. A teacher in the school for wealthy young ladies is hired to accompany one of her students to England to meet her fiance. When her young charge elopes with a stranger, Sheridan wonders how she's going to explain it to the girl's intended. Just as she is about to tell him, she steps into the path of a cargo net loaded with crates. Three days later, she awakens in Stephen Westmoreland's London mansion with no memory of who she is, the only hint of her past, the puzzling fact that everyone calls her Miss Lancaster. All she truly knows is that she's falling in love with a dazzling, dazzlingly handsome English Earl. Okay, then we have Tender Triumph. I think this is a standalone. So, stunning Katie Connolly submerged her painful past in a promising career, an elegant apartment, and men she could keep at a distance. Raymond Galvera gave her a love she had never known, but she was afraid to surrender her heart to the strong, willful, secretive man. Okay, then the sequel series. The first book is Once and Always. So, Victoria is suddenly left orphaned and alone. She's eager to claim her long-lost heritage. So she goes to the English estate of her distant cousin. He has remained a mystery to her, bewildered by his arrogant demeanor, yet drawn to his panther-like grace, she came to sense the searingly painful memories that smoldered in the depths of his jade green eyes. He is unable to resist her. Then the second book in the series is Something Wonderful. 
Alex Alexandra Lawrence, an artless country girl, and her tempestuous marriage to Jordan Townsend. He's the Duke of Hawthor Hawthorne. They're swept into the endlessly fascinating world of London, London society. She becomes ensnared in jealousy and revenge. But behind her husband's cold, arrogant mask, there lives a tender, vital, sensual man, the man she married. Now she will fight for his very life and the rapturous love that they alone can share. And then the third book is Almost Heaven. So Elizabeth Cameron is an orphan who survived a storm of a scandal in London, and now her uncle holds her estate in trust. Um, he commands her to choose among three unlikely suitors. Only Ian Thornton, a bold, handsome rogue who has made his fortune from exploits on the high seas, captures her fancy. But passion must conquer pride, for he wrongly sees the lady as a frivolous flirt, and she mistakenly disdains him as a fortune-hunting gambler. And then we have Remember When, which is the first book in the Foster saga. So, um, Diana Foster is alone on a moonlit balcony at a charity ball. She was recently jilted by her fiancé for a blonde Italian heiress, um, which she found out via a tabloid. So she felt obliged to attend the ball, if only to uphold the sparkling, steadfast image of her family's Beautiful Living magazine. Um, she's very publicly unengaged, so she knows that certain socialites are already spinning nasty rumors. So why was billionaire Cole Harrison closing in on her with two crystal flutes and a bottle of champagne? He has received an ultimatum from his crusty uncle. He must bring home a wife soon or see part of the business that he had built go to an undeserving relative. Okay, then we have double standards. So the ruggedly handsome president of Global Industries handled his business the way he handled his women with charm, daring, and ruthless self-control. Um, a man used to the very best, Nick hired Lauren Danner and assumed the proud beauty would soon be another easy conquest. But Lauren's flashing wit and rare, rare spirit dazzled him, da wow, I can't talk, dazzled him and slowly against his will he was intrigued, challenged, and in love. Um, but she was living a lie, a challenge that became more dangerous with every passing moment. Trapped in a web of deceit, she fought her growing love for Nick. Her secret could destroy his fragile trust and the promise of life with the most compelling man that she had ever met. That one also sounds really good. Then we have Perfect, which is the second book in the Second Opportunities series. This one is a chunker. This is almost 700 pages. So Julie Matheson was a foster child. She's now a respectable teacher in a small Texas town. She's determined to give back all the kindness that she received from her adopted family. Zachary Benedict was an actor and director whose Academy Award winning career had been shattered when he was wrongly convicted of murdering his wife. Sorry if you can hear the room, but it will not turn off. And I don't want to pick it up and like ruin its track progress. After the tall, ruggedly handsome Zach escaped from a tax Texas prison, he abducted Julie and forced her to drive him to his Colorado mountain hideout. She was outraged, cautious, and unable to ignore the instincts that whispered of his innocence. So this next set of books is by Kenley McGregor. Um, this is the Brotherhood of the Sword series. All of these are in the series. I just don't have every book in the series. So the first one is Master of Desire. So Draven D. Montague, the Earl of Ravenswood, would never have entered the home of his most hated adversary had the king himself had not the king himself ordered Draven to take in his foe's daughter for a year to forge bonds of peace between their two feuding houses. Yet here's a lass whose spirit and loveliness could tempt Draven to betray his sworn vow never to let another close to his heart. Emily knows the searing heat of her passion could burn down stubborn Draven's defenses, but will his surrender ignite a blaze so hot that it consumes them both? I think all of these are like Scottish. Because the second one is Claiming the Highlander. Don't know much about this. This just says to end a long running feud, the proud lassie convinced the clanswomen to refuse their men everything. But could she herself resist the attractions of the dashing rogue who was dedicated to her surrender? Then the fourth book, I don't have the third one. This is the fourth book in the series. This is Taming the Scotsman. Again, don't know much about this, but this says no one can tell the hot-blooded Scottish lass whom to marry, but the much feared man Nora runs but the much feared man that Nora runs to for protection may be more perilous to her heart than any unwanted groom and much more difficult to tame. Then the fifth book is A Dark Champion. 
This one just says, the beautiful Rowena detests war and all who fight it and would never allow a knight like Strider of Blackmore into her heart, but even the renowned Lady of Love needs a champion. Then this is number six, Return of the Warrior. So Queen Adara refuses to let a power mad usurper steal her crown, but the only way to protect what's hers is to seek out the man that she married in childhood. He owes allegiance only to the mysterious brotherhood and has no wish to be king over anyone but himself. But she demands that he accompanies her back to their kingdoms or at the very least provide her with an heir to her throne. Okay, and then the seventh book is The Warrior. So Lachlan McAllister was born to lead, um, to control, he was groomed to c take control of his clan, um, but when he learns that the brother he thought was dead might still be alive, he embarks on a quest to find the truth. Katarina wants a life of freedom, but now her royal father wants to use her as a pawn to ensure a treaty between conflicting lands. So much so that he's willing to kidnap his daughter to force the issue. But she escapes, and fate throws her into the path of a man that she loathes. Okay guys, we're almost done with this half of the video, and then I'll do a second half for the other ones. So, Julie Garwood is this next set. So we have the Rose series. I don't know much about these. These are not why I bought this bundle, but um, the first book in the Rose series is For the Roses. So in Bluebell, Montana, everyone knew better than to mess with the Claibornes. The brothers had once been a mismatched game of street urchins until they found an abandoned baby girl in a New York City alley, named her Mary Rose, and headed west to raise her to be a lady. And then I think like she searches for identity when she grows up. And then all of the rest of these are like real little bitty. Like this one is a chunker, and then you got like, so I don't know. This one is one pink rose. Then we have one right white rose and then one red rose. Then from the Highlands Laird series, we have the first book, which is The Secret. This is a library copy, which is kind of a bummer, but it's okay. I got it on eBay. So Judith Hampton was as beautiful as she was proud and loyal. Her dear Scottish friend from childhood was about to give birth, and she had promised to be at her side. But there was another private reason for her journey back home to the Highlands, and that was to meet her dad, who she had never known. Nothing prepared her for the sight of the Scottish barbarian who was to escort her into his land, Ian Maitland, who was the laird of his clan, a man more powerfully compelling than any she had ever encountered. Okay, then the second book in that series is Ransom. Okay, so a victim of the scourge is innocent Gillian, who's a mere child when all of this happens. She's now a beautiful young woman. She finds the keys to resolving her past in a handsome Scottish, with the cunning and courage of the daring Scotsman and the friendship of a new ally, she, she at last fights the unscrupulous Baron Alfred laying claim to her home, her family, and her father's reputation. Then we have Saving Grace. This one sadly is like all whatever, but um, so Lady Johanna learned that she was a widow um, and she vowed that she was never going to marry again. She's only 16, so but King John demanded that she remarry and selected a bridegroom for her, and it seemed she must agree until her beloved foster brother suggested that she wed his friend, the handsome Scottish warrior Gabriel McBain. Okay, then we have Gentle Warrior. Uh, Elizabeth Montwright barely escaped the massacre that destroyed her family and exiled her from her ancestral castle. Bent on vengeance, she returns to the stronghold disguised as a peasant. Only a man with a heart as hardened as his muscular body could resist the lovely Elizabeth's impassioned pleas, but Geoffrey believes that he desires only her caresses. He vows that he will master her, but as he seeks to subdue her spirited heart, is she the one woman who will open his heart to the gentle strength of love? And then last one is the prize. Nicola was forced to choose a husband from the assembled Norman nobles. She chose Royce, a barren, a barren warrior whose fierce demeanor could not conceal his chivalrous and tender heart. She vowed to bend Royce to her will, despite the whirlwind of feelings he aroused in her. Ferocious in battle, seasoned in passion, Royce was surprised by the depth of his emotion whenever he caressed his charming bride. Yeah. Anyway, okay, you guys, sorry. This was like a really freaking long video. Um, but I love historical romance. I'm really excited to read these. Like I said, I still have... I still have books from Sabrina Jeffries, Eloisa James, and um, Joanna Lindsay. Like, 
this many from them so I might do a completely separate video if y'all are interested in seeing the rest of those but anyway thank you guys so much for watching thank you if you made it to this point in the video um if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on my future videos and I'll see you guys next time bye guys